Welcome back to my African Village TV, your guide to the hidden treasures of Africa. In this journey, we'll uncover the depths of Ndibo and you can make what explore everything that makes them truly unique and exceptional among African societies, from their egalitarian social structure to their prowess in trade and entrepreneurship. The Igbos have left an indelible mark on the continent's history, even on the entire globe. So buckle up and get ready to be amazed by the remarkable Ndiwo. Okay, the first thing I want us to do today is to watch an insightful footage of an Oba somewhere in the western part of Nigeria explaining their own tradition, how it came about and how Ndibo are the custodians of that particular culture or tradition. I will take you guys to my highlight on this vlog. Take a listen. The world of the spiritual world, that's the world of divinity, existed several thousands of years before humanity. One of the world of divinity is Ajay, in which in Ife, it has been from time immemorial, before creation of humanity, it has been like that, in terms of celebration of wealth. But to the glory of God, a particular race actually discovered it first. And the truth be told, the race that first discovered prosperity and wealth, and they really nurtured it, are the Igbo race. The Igbos first discovered it through their ancestral background, the lineage of Obatala, discovered the prosperity and wealth in terms of the divinity world. And that's the reason why today, the race of Igbo people, they're very, very particular and they have very good expertise when it comes to commerce. They are very distinct all over the world. There is no place in the world that you will go that you won't find it an Igbo man. Okay, I know you must have seen that video. I'm coming with another one. And my highlight right away is that Igbos are found literally all over the world. And in some countries in Africa, we are even indigenous people like Ndibo of Equatorial Guinea. We are also found in some part of Cameroon. We are also found in somewhere Sierra Leone. We are also found in Gabon. You guys know the history. But like I said, my highlight on this vlog is realizing that there could be one of the events that led to us being scattered all over not only West Africa, but in some parts of the south and the eastern part of Africa. I want you to document this video, download this video, keep this video somewhere in your archives because someday you will have children, grandchildren, you want to tell them a little bit of a story of the continuation of the tribe called the Igbos. It will serve you because right about now, we have got no true history classes in our schools in the Igbo land. They know their reasons, you know their reasons, we all know their reasons. And we are for that reason going to be the media for ourselves. We're going to dig up our own stories, we're going to dig up our own histories. We are going to stay informed 
we are going to stay enlightened when it comes to who we are. First, as Ndibu. Take a listen. And now, this video is not inspired by tribal whatever. This video is inspired by a deep sense of identity, a deep sense of loss, a deep sense of search, a deep sense of essence. Who are we? And as a matter of fact, you have seen that everything that was perpetrated against Ndibu was carefully orchestrated the scattering of the Biafran children all over Africa. Think about that for a moment. The lures of Kenya. I just made a discovery and I want you to take a listen to this. If you, you are in Nigeria and you are reading about Kenya, any name that you will see, most of the names, not any, hmm. most of the names that begin with O, like in uh, your tribe, yes, uh, are Lugos, eh? mm. most likely. Mm. Oh, that is a Lugos. Eh? Wow, yeah, so Obina, Ojuku, yeah, yeah, Onyeka, yeah, Onyeka, uh, Onyeka is the name here. Yeah? <laughs> we have Okech, <laughs> well, Okechi, Okechuku, Okechuku, yes, <laughs> yeah, but we have Okech here. I think, in a way, they tried to disable us the Igbos. Exactly. The same way with us here. So I think when I was reading like, uh, you know, Zeke, uh, Azikiwe, yeah. uh, people like Ojuku, Ojuku, which is also a name here. Yeah, yeah. Ojuku is a name here? Ojuku, oh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god, you guys should come back to Nigeria. Would you please and then here? Oh many wow. people I can count you like there's a guy who died here, his name was Ojuku. Ojuku uh, in, in Kenya. <laughs> so, you know, this is amazing to me. And Nyihanyamiri. That at this point of our lives, I think I already left late twenties of my life to first discover that Nonyembo, the first slave that bought his own freedom, Bonyibo, Nafiabo, Oluda, in other words, loud voice, he's from Ikuano, the present day Abia state. When this man bought his freedom, if you follow and read about him a little bit as you can find. He was later renamed uh, with a British name. And when he started helping other slaves to come back to Africa, he discovered Freetown in Sierra Leone. And he settled the first set of people that he helped to migrate, to leave the territory, to leave the slave zone you know, in the West, to bring them back to West Africa. Let's shift a little bit from there. Onadim Bakwan, Madimalo, Rutia. And I think it's time we start digging up the stories so that we will stay enlightened, we'll start asking the right questions. For me, like I told you guys, my highlight is the scattering of the Biafran kids all over Africa. Mm -hmm. 
mastering the art of commerce. Let us explore the Igbo's exceptional business acumen, highlighting their vast trade networks and entrepreneurial prowess. If there is one thing the Igbo are renowned for, it's their prowess in commerce and trade. From humble beginnings as farmers and craftspeople, Ndibu expanded their horizons and became one of the most successful trading communities in West Africa. And even the world at large, the president of the World Trade Organization, Bonibu, my namesake, their entrepreneurial spirit drove them to establish vast trade networks that spanned the entire region. That we, indeed, <laughs> when it comes to trade and commerce, I think I touched on it on our video. It's very, very insightful as well. And today, go to the UK Parliament. Iga Fonyibo there. Go to the Can Canadian Parliament, to the United States, to everywhere you can think of. Meta, YouTube, wherever you think. They are talking about money and making money, creating things, innovation, apprenticeship. I touched on it as well. That is the core secret why the Igbo race will never be poor no matter what happens and it is so unique to a point that it has been adopted officially in Harvard to study Igbo boy in Igbo as a course as a program think about that for a moment back to my highlight so who are we who are these people who are we that we don't even know who we are? Actual meaning is today. You tell yourself, I can never be poor in my life. And from today onwards, I stop struggling to get things done. I want you to listen to this particular narrative of how we created the missiles, the bullets, the bombs that we used during the Biafran confrontation with the Nigerian gunmen. Take a listen. Who will even do it on our incendiary bombs? You know, on the under pressure, all kinds of elects the come. Obunya I think it's time, that time is now that we start gathering these histories. If just like what happened at the Berlin conference, I'll talk about that in another video. And I'm excited I started this series because I've been researching on these things <laughs> for as long as I can remember. And I think I'm ready, fully ready to do an exposition of this information so that our people can get informed of who we really are. <laughs> I don't know how to sing that song very well, but I know one thing that Flavor said, you know? And so, yes, I am going to be wrapping up this video here. As we come to the end of this remarkable journey, it's clear that the Igbo people are truly extraordinary. Their unwavering spirit 
entrepreneurial prowess and rich cultural tapestry have earned them the rightful place among Africa's most remarkable ethnic groups. From their decentralized yet united communities to their progressive views on gender equality. Ndibo have defined conventional norms and forged their own unique path. Their resilience in the face of adversity, where, whether in trade, war, or daily life, is a testament to the strength of their character. Akokon Ndibo is one of the triumph over challenges of innovation in the face of adversity and of a deep-rooted respect for tradition intertwined with a progressive outlook. It is a story that deserves to be celebrated, shared and passed on to the future generations as a shining example of what can be achieved through determination, unity and an unbreakable spirit. So, the next time someone asks you about Ndiwo, you will have a wealth of knowledge to share. A tale of resilience, entrepreneurship, and cultural richness that has left an indelible mark on the history of human civilization. Until I see you guys, Nana, that is position that is going to be mind blowing and super insightful. Make sure you subscribe, guys. Kaya bari kotawan on katana comment section bikuno. Let us know what your thoughts are, what you have learned today of one of the reasons, one of the events that led to us being scattered all over Africa. And until I see you guys in another one, God bless you. Akabukwa mwadun, splendor, ngozi. Bye for now.